so it'll go whoosh, across. One of these days I will learn how to do cable management and then everything will be happy. Today is not that day. One guide scope, which will try and position exactly opposite the counterweight to counter the counterweight weight. Very nice. 26C, lots of dew heaters because it's cold. Right, I can't see Polaris, but I've got to go and cook the dinner for the kids and me because I'm hungry. Venus and the moon. Very, very cool indeed. This is Orion. I took this about a week and a bit ago. We've had two clear nights. Two. That's amazing. Two clear nights. Now, I stacked everything and this is the result. And I realised straight away I forgot to use my flats. So I went back and redid this with my flats and something happened. So this is what happened. Look at that. This is the returning of my old friend. The ring. And I could not believe it when I saw this. When I had this before, it was when I had my 200 PDS. And I swore it was because of that scope. This is my 130 PDS and it has never ever ever given me this artifact before never and i saw this and i nearly cried honestly i nearly cried i didn't know what i'd done wrong to get this massive ring i also at the same time took this image and again once it had been stacked and processed it has the ring of doom in there I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe this. This is the most annoying artifact because you cannot get rid of it and there is nothing you can do to get rid of that interaction, the circle. And previously I thought this was light leaks so I covered up every bit of the telescope to make sure it wasn't light leaks and it's not light leaks. So when you look at these two images they both have this large ring in the image. But, interestingly, I only get this when I've added the flats. Because if you recall, this was the image without the flats. And there's no ring there. Those raw subframes are fine. So it's when the flats are added in to this image. And it got me thinking, what's going on with the flats? These are the flats here. This is... A single flat. I have debayed this and obviously it has the, the green prominence because of the RGGB so two green pixels for every other pixel and this is just the grayscale version so there's no real use to you guys seeing that but that is the flat. There's no ring there. There really isn't and this is a single 30 second debayed subframe so there's the original grayscale subframe which I debared and that's the subframe there's no ring there there is something about when these get glued together in stacking which causes the ring shape to appear there's some kind of interaction between the flats and the raw subframes which creates that issue. And just to be 100% thorough, this is the master flat, which is debayered. So this is the original master flat. Therefore, that is the debayered version, which is used in the, in the final stack. And you, cannot, you can't see a ring present. And that is a raw subframe in relation to the master flat there unless I'm missing something that I just can't see on my screen I can't see the ring within that flat which when you take them and stack it all together it gives you this ring and I thought this must be ridiculous so I took the flats again 
as if I'd made a mistake. And again, the same issue applied. The interesting thing about this is I've never had an issue with my 130 PDS. So I wondered where this had come from. And the only thing that I had changed on the scope is to add a dual narrowband filter. So I changed the filter from a UVIR cut to a dual narrowband filter. So I ran a test. I swapped the filter to a UVIR cut filter again and I ran a test taking 15 subframes and I stacked those with brand new flats. Then I swapped the filter back to the dual narrowband filter and took 15 subframes and brand new flats and then I stacked them and the results are amazing. This is the UV IR cut data on the right and on the left this is the dual narrowband data. This is stacked and brand new flats. So the UV IR cut does not have the ring in it. But the dual narrowband filter visibly has the ring in there. It's fascinating to think that a filter is causing some kind of artifact when the image is stacked together. It's fascinating to think that a UVIR cut filter would give such a marked difference in performance compared to a light pollution filter, which is what the dual narrowband filter is. Hey, look, there's me on another video I made with a giant ring behind me. This is another video I did uh, about this ring artifact that you get. When I made this video, I did not realize that this was as a result of the filters which are interacting in a strange way with the flats and also with light pollution as well and when you stacked it together it created that ring. I genuinely don't know what is happening within the Newtonian with a light pollution filter like this to give this ring effect. I have found it pretty much all over the astronomy forums where people have had these issues with different filters. And my gut feeling is it's mainly with narrowband filters. So those highly reflective filters that you see, because I know that when I look at a dual narrowband filter or a triband filter or an H alpha filter, they're quite shiny and you can see yourself reflecting back in them. But with the UVIR cut filter and the more broadband filters, they are less shiny and they're more transparent. And they tend not to give this ring. Now, I've only done this test with two filters, with a dual narrowband and a UVIR cut filter. But I must have been using either a triband or a narrowband filter with my previous Newtonian, my 200 PDS, and the interaction of that filter with the, the Newtonian telescope and the flats panel clearly is creating an artifact. Because when I went back to the UVIR cut filter, the artifact went away. I'm now going to test a couple of other filters. I have an L Pro filter, which is a broadband light pollution filter. And I'm pretty sure I've used that with a Newtonian before. But I can't be 100% sure. I just don't know. So I need to run a test with that filter. Um, the UVIR cut filter is great, but I live in a Bortle 6, Bortle 7. It's mainly Bortle 7, to be honest. And a filter is useful. UVIR cut is good, but it's it would be better if I used something that gave me better light pollution filtering. It would appear that with my Newtonians, I cannot use narrowband filters. So I can't use a triband or a dual band narrowband filter with my Newtonians. Now, my original plan 
was to use the dual telescope rig. But since my slight revelation with the UVIR cut, I'm just happy to get any data at all. So tonight's rig is a 130 PDS wearing a very nice 26C camera with an IMX571 sensor, which is a rather nice camera. And if I can unscrew that, this should hopefully already be quite balanced. So I am going to image it from the moment it clears the street lamp over there until it goes behind the house here. So it'll go whoosh, across. One guide scope, which I'll try and position exactly opposite the counterweight to counter the counterweight weight. One of these days I will learn how to do cable management and then everything will be happy. Today is not that day. It's looking good. So I need power, power supply for the mount, power supply for the camera and network. Mm -hmm. 